Aloha. Welcome to, to another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Many people believe that education can be the silver bullet or the linchpin that can help solve problems like homelessness, drug addiction, social division, and income inequality. And in Hawaii, of all places, where our many intertwined cultures all cherish our keiki and do all we can to open doors for their successes, we assume that a high priority is placed on having a world-class educational system. But is it? On this show, we talk about the programs available to our keiki, the quality of our facilities and infrastructure, addressing deferred maintenance, increasing the number of cool rooms for our keiki and teachers, a more comprehensive curriculum approach, as well as appropriately recognizing and valuing our teachers and administrative staff. And perhaps most importantly, what life and career opportunities are we providing for our keiki to thrive today and tomorrow? On today's show, we're going to learn a little bit about charter schools, but not just any charter school. Today, we're going to learn about Myron B. Thompson Academy, chartered since the year 2000, and is actually not just a charter school, but it's an e-school, an e-charter school. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that, as I said. But with me, it is my honor uh, to introduce Mr. Myron K. Thompson, the chairman of the Board of Governors for Myron B. Thompson Academy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Carl. Good to be here. No, I know. We're looking forward to learning a bit about this. So, okay, so it was chartered in 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been around for a little while, about 16 years now. Um, and it is named after your father. Correct. Right. So um, what is it that started this idea? What is it that got you interested and perhaps your family interested in being involved in starting this particular school? <clears throat> well, it was chartered in 2000, as you say. The um, Diana Oshiro was the third principal of the school. She wanted to actually rename the school in 2002. So she came to our family. My father had passed away the year before. My father is Myron B. Thompson, um, uh, Bishop of State Trustee, head of the Polynesian Voyaging Society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, dedicated to um, education. It was his whole life. So anyway, Diana came to our family after he had passed away and asked if we would consider renaming the school with his name. And, you know, um, it was my brother, my sister, my mom, and we basically thought about it for maybe 13 seconds and said yes. <laughs> we had known Diana from before. We had known about her reputation as an educator, as an innovator, and as a, um, um, she was a principal. She moved up in the ranks to assistant uh, superintendent. And so she came to us and said, would you consider doing that? We said, of course. We knew in our hearts that it would be something my father would say yes to as well. Yes, without a second. Without a doubt. Yeah, so yeah. that's how it started. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now, um, Diana Shiro, she actually initiated the the concept of e-commerce or e not e-commerce. I'm sorry, e-charter schools. Uh, the, the, an e-school, and then becoming an e-charter school, right. uh, beginning in I believe 1994 right. is when that started. Um, so that's one of the distinctions, first of all. It's not just a charter school, it's an e-charter school, which means all or, or most, depending upon, I think, the, the grade range, of the courses are taught online uh, through a laptop and, and other, perhaps other means, Skype and, and so forth, right. um, in order to have the interactions and do all of the coursework through that. that, that that's correct? Is there anything I missed? No, I mean, that's basically correct. So it's done via... It's an online school, as you say. We have um, a system where students do come in and they meet with their teachers face-to-face -face at times. But generally speaking, if the, the kids are doing well, they don't really need to come in as often. It's only if they're dropping a bit, we bring them in, we get them um, maybe some tutoring, whatever they need, then they send them back out. But they, one of the keys to the success is having the, the parents involved, as yes. you might know something about. A little bit. Yeah. But um, anyway, so it, it's, it's a collaboration of um, staff, the kids themselves and the parents, yeah. and it worked really, really well. And that's actually, that theme is actually consistent with all schools, actually. Yep. It does need to have that collaboration, and that's one of the areas where sometimes we fall down a little bit. Right. Um, but in particular, when it comes to the online courses, 
one of the things that I'll, I'll add, so yeah, what Myron was just suggesting is that I have a little bit of knowledge of it because my daughter uh, attends. She's 15 years old and she attends Myron B. Thompson Academy and she's, um, she's enjoyed her first full semester there. Uh, she got all A's and B's, so I'm very proud of her for that. Oh, that's great. Uh, so good job for her. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things I like about it, and I want to get your thoughts too, one of the things I like about it is it provides a preparation for the university life that's coming because all of the coursework and everything that she needs to accomplish on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis throughout each quarter and semester is on her and is on her to create the timeline other than a virtual class here and a virtual class there. It's on her to complete and, and manage her own time. Is that something that was thought about or is that just a consequence of it being an online school? Yeah, so I really need to talk a little bit more in depth about Diana Oshiro. Oh, please. Our principal. She's actually the, she's been in the DOE and in the education system for many, many years, but she is just a, an incredible innovator. And she's, she knows the system so well that she can see ahead of time what the kids need to be prepared to be in the, go into college, to graduate and then go into college. And so that was all thought through. She knew where the testings are going to be at certain times along the way. So she's set up the course where to accommodate that exactly. Yeah, That's why our kids do really well. I mean, our graduation rate into, co into college is really high. Yeah, and so I'll give her the credit for that for sure. No, that's excellent. Uh, that's, so I'm glad that that's one of the things that seems obvious. Yep. Uh, once you've been through at least a semester yep. and you really begin to see it, and, and as, as you're thinking about college life, um, that's, that's an obvious thing. Uh, uh, so I know I, I, I think that's a great, great benefit for that. Yep. So, so good forethink, forethought and good thinking on her part. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so let's go back a little bit and, and take a look at what it means to be a charter school. It's, you are a, 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 a it, it is, Myron B. Thompson is a charter school, which is separate from, in some ways, separate from a public school and separate from a private school. Uh, it, it, was it intended to be sort of a, a middle ground? The, the idea of the charter school was um, formed around the idea of giving a little bit of more autonomy to the school itself, to the, um, pick their own curriculum, to be bring in innovation if they can or want to, to make a, um, a bit of a testing ground for a better, better education model. That's how it all started and it continues to be, take that role. Okay. And so some of the uh, results are, are shown that the charter school, because of that autonomy, um, we, um, has the ability to, experiment's not a good word, but to use other methodology that they find in the education world that might work. and and. As a result, we have pretty phenomenal results. Yeah, so you've got, you're not bound by the same regulations. Some of them, yes, but you've got some more flexibility. Exactly. You're bound to um, hold your charter. You need to make sure that all of the standards are met to maintain the charter. However, you have flexibility within your curriculum. That's right. What I find fascinating about that is, as we've had teachers, and as, as we've had, um, I guess, HSTA members, and uh, we had Corey Rosenley on it, what, every, what all of the teachers want is that. Right. Every one of the teachers throughout all of our public education system, they want that kind of autonomy. They want to be respected for the professionals that they are, right? Exactly. So the charter school gives that opportunity just as the nature of what it is. Right. Okay, I see that. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, um, and, and to add to that, Carl, you know, the, the, the nature of our school is a little bit different in that we're an online learning school. Yeah. So our teachers have the flexibility to manage, quote unquote, manage their students in different ways. You know, they can you know, grab them by Skype or they can call them in. It's not your traditional brick and mortar bound by the bell and everything else. It's, it's different and it gives, it, it we, share the responsibility with the students themselves yeah. to be the, the they're the learner you know we provide the vehicle yeah. and um it's more we of guide a self learning them. thing if they if they are driven to learn if they're yes. driven to excel then they will do very well precisely that's what we've been able to see with our daughter yeah. and but at the same time if they have a moment if they have a week or two where they've just you know bowed out for a minute you begin to see it and what i'll say is the teachers let us know. Right. The teachers send us an email. Oh, by the way, just want to let you know we'd 
as follow up on this assignment or that assignment, uh, just let us know. Like, okay. So it's much more immediate. When it comes to our kids who go to, like, my son goes to Kamehameha schools, uh, my daughter goes to Ma'e Ma'e. We don't hear that. We don't hear that information. Every now and then, like once a week, we might get a written report saying, oh, this happened. And so we hear like way after the fact, well, there's much more ready, available communication. Right. And that, I th that's a big part, I think, of, of the program as well. It is. And it's a, it's a culture that was derived really from Diana on down because she's been in the DOE for so long and she had her um, experiences with the, the traditional brick and mortar and all of that. And so she had the opportunity really as a principal to kind of like open up and do what she wanted to do. And so she gathered around her some incredible staff, which she still has, and they've um, had this ability to do what they, not, not exactly do what they want, but do what they think is right for the kids. Yeah, and, which, and, and, and which is a lot of communication, yeah. which is a lot of communication to the parents, and it's feedback back and forth, yeah, yeah. and um, that's how it's all evolved. So, uh, doing a little bit of research, I saw that you have, I don't know if you still do, but at one point it was planned out that you would have K through 6 and then 7 through 12 grades. Um, I'm full aware that 7 through 12 is, is the um, online e-school, um, and I believe the K through 6, is it still functioning? And, and it's not an e-school. Um, but I haven't. I don't know much about that. So if you could tell us a bit more about that part of it. It's very much alive. I mean, okay, good. yeah. So it's um, we have I think a total of just over 600 kids total. Oh, wow. Most of them are in the elementary school, okay. and um, so it is a blend of them coming in. We have different classes for them on on the campus, which is in the in the YWCA downtown. Right on Richards. Right. Yep. And um, and the high school kids and the upper school kids they are mainly at home because by then they've figured out the system, they don't know what's expected. We, you know, that's all agreed upon and so mm -hmm. they do well that way. But the younger guys come in and out yeah, and yeah. it's very alive. Um, it's headed by the Diana's sister actually, Kurumi Kapana Aki. Okay. She do, does a magnificent job as well. Excellent. And the, the matriculation rate, I mean, obviously the kids, once they're in your program, do they tend to stay in or, or what sort of coming and going? Um, they, the, the high school is um, uh, smaller because what happens is some of the kids that come in are military kids. Mm, okay. So they'll come in in the elementary uh, range and they'll be gone after three or four years. And so it fluctuates a lot in that arena. But the guys who are the local kids do make it all the way through. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so the, a, lot of, a lot of military students. I guess that makes some sense. Uh, it does because our model is, um, you know, the online model yeah. is used to what, not used to what they have, but it, get, it suits them really well. Sure. Because you know they're, they're here for two or three years, they can do their yeah. own thing online, okay. and a lot of them are homeschoolers as well. well and that—that that was the other thing, homeschoolers, because this keeps the door open to right. maintain that. Uh, exactly. One of the challenges, as far as being a parent that has this class or these classes is we have to either be home with them or they have to go to work with us. Right. Uh, so fortunately in our situation, our daughter is able to go to the office uh, with my wife, Sherry, and she's got a desk set up and she does all of her work right there. Perfect. So she goes to work with her and it's right there and if there's any questions and it's around the corner from the school itself anyway, from, uh, from YWCA, so right. everything is right there. Uh, but maybe not everybody has that flexibility um, to, to that extent as well. But that's one of the challenges, um, yes. I think, to, to that. Uh, the other, you know, one of the other ones is how they adjust to that kind of um, flexible schedule. Right. Is, is, I guess, one way of putting that. So. Yeah, and then the other one that keeps coming up, what about uh, socialization? You know, what about being with the kids every day and things yes, like yes, that? Yes, so yes. Some... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the challenges. Uh, we come back, we're going to take a little bit of a break at the okay. moment. So thank you for joining us. Uh, this is, again, Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we have with us today Mr. Myron K. Thompson of Myron B. Thompson Academy. See you soon. Thanks. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I am Ina Chang. I am the guest host for Small Business Hawaii with Reg Baker. Tune in every Thursday at 2 p.m. and watch us. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. 
take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around. We'll see you then. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we have Mr. Myron K. Thompson with us from Myron B. Thompson Academy. Thanks again for joining us. Good so, to be here. let's talk about some of the other challenges. You were just uh, uh, alluding to some of the challenges, and one of those is the sociability. So, uh, of that, and, and, and I recognize uh, with, with our daughter, we, for us, it was a, it was a benefit at the moment because right. we were just bringing her into an area where she didn't know anyone. So we didn't want to throw her in in the middle of the year, in December and January, into a big school like Roosevelt, uh, for example, that she wouldn't know anyone. Right. So we felt, you know what, there would be a much better opportunity to get her more integrated into this area than just throw her in. So immediately we, we, we pursued that and we appreciate all the efforts to make that happen. Um, but this whole semester, as the weeks in go, go by, she kept having this urge and this need to want to be out there and want to be engaged with other kids her age. She's 15. So I'm aware of some of it, so, but I want, if you would let us know the thoughts and the intentions and, 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 and from the academy's perspective, what those options and opportunities might be. Yeah, so we try our best to provide um, uh, what w would be considered normal um, um, facilities or things for the kids, right? We have music, we have dance, we have things people can join, and that's all available to anybody. Um, we do try and link them up they, with other, like there's homeschool associations that they can get linked up with and uh, meet other kids that way. Um, it's a typical, you know, the sports arena is, is available as well. If a kid is gifted in basketball, we can set him up with another school and he can play there. You know, so there are many opportunities to do that. So, so one of the things that I've learned along the way is that, that that obstacle is a bit of a blessing in disguise because what it does is it forces the parents to be more engaged with the kids. And you, you can yeah. talk about that. But it, it really does. And as a result, they get closer to the kids yes. and learn more about them. And we, we homeschooled our kids when they were really young, so we know, know all about that. And so, we, it, it, yes, it's challenging in that they don't have another group of kids right in front of them, but the, the parents take a little bit of that, right, and then figure out ways to offer other things, and the school does it as well. Sure, sure. Now, I, I think, so again, is that by, was that partially by design, or was that a, a consequence? Um, a, real, both, a realization actually. after the fact that, both. oh, by the way. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. <clears throat> and we try, we, you know, we do field trips and things like that, the Coconut Island and various things to give them exposure to the sciences and things like that. But I just want to tell one story about how we has, have somewhat overcome that whole thing. So we, we decided at one point a couple of years ago to put together a debate team, okay? Now you figure we have kids in five islands, mm -hmm. right? And not all of the good debaters in our school are on Oahu. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> right? <clears throat> so they're wherever they are. So they decided that they're, um, one of the um, faculty decided they're going to put together a debate team and sent out to who, who's, in, who's interested. So we got responses from all the islands. So we, what we got them to do is do, they Skyped each other and they, and they started to debate each other with their iPads. Wow. Right? And they, you know, that started going, it started going well. And, and so, you know, we, we were just this little online school. You got Punahou, you got Kamehameha, you got Iolani. These are like master debaters. Yeah. And so we decided to, to you know, throw them to the wolves. You know. <laughs> and they did fantastically well just okay. by that kind of training. So it's another one, of, it was just a use of technology. And that, that actually hits on one of the keys. We've had uh, several shows going back the last couple of months. We've talked about the use of technology in the classroom. Yeah. And by necessity, by function, 
Myron B. Thompson Academy is a technology school. It's a technology classroom right. by necessity by, uh, of how you do that. So making sure that they know how to use software, and that they understand the, the internet, that they understand the safeties and the dangers of the internet, that they are fully engaged with how these programs work, whether it's Skype or I, I know Khan Academy is one thing that is also used as, as for on the math side and, sure. uh, as well. But, but making sure that they are computer, not just computer literate, computer adaptive, um, computer capable. Right. And I think that's a huge benefit. Right. Uh, that I think that not a lot of kids in our in our public schools have, at least not early on, and sometimes never have a computer. Right. Uh, at home anyway. Right. And the other there is another really big advantage to all that. That's the speed of communication. Right. So everything that the kids do is tracked. Right. All their courses are done online, and everything's tracked, saved on a hard disk somewhere, accessible to all the teachers, and so. It's all there. So you don't have that in a public school. You don't have that in a classroom with 30 kids and a teacher standing in front of them. You just don't. Yeah. And, uh, and um, so the advantage is that everything's documented. It's, everything's there. So if we know that a kid's struggling, we know right away. You know right away. And, and everybody can knows. See. We can see it. Yeah. And so we can jump in there and, and help them um, immediately. I think, you know, it, it, obviously it's a model that's going to evolve in time as communication evolves in time and the internet, et cetera. I just wanted to, to um, say one little thing. So my father, <clears throat> my father was from the old school. My father never went on a computer his entire life, right? Um, but fortunately for him, he had a couple of secretaries. But um, anyway, he, he was very much, I mean, I remember his last days, he was very much, you know, involved with the idea that Technology and innovation is going to be the new the new way of going. So he was very pro that. So I'm so excited Excellent. that we have evolved this far. He would be so proud of us today. Yeah, he really would. But uh, but it's that. because yeah. that you know the, that technology is available to us, yeah. and we've developed over the last you know 13 years uh, into what we know now. Um, to the point where we have um, people from China, from from Korea, from Japan coming to us wanting advice on how to start their schools. Okay, so you're helping other countries develop a program. Yeah, online, An specifically online program. Online program. I, I was actually going to ask um, as well, because I'm, I'm aware that you've done some traveling on that behalf, and I remember that, but I wasn't sure of all of the details. Yeah. So some of that was you helping, going and helping and providing some advice uh, with, uh, as far as this program is concerned. But what about, um, I'll just segue from there, do you get any of your students from there? Do you get any of your teachers from there? And, and, and what sort of a international program do you have? Yeah, so you, um, this year is the first year we're actually going to get some kids from um, China coming in. And they're just coming in for two weeks. And they're here just to experience what this is all about. Because the people in, in those, those particular countries are not, they don't have the track record of online schools like we do. They just want advice and they just want to be involved. And, and some of them want the ability to have their kids get a dual diploma, one in their country and one through an online school like us, so that for them it's an advantage because the kids themselves become uh, more adaptive into the U.S. college sure. um, system. And so that's evolving because of their need um, for um, understanding and their need to figure out a way to tap into the U.S. Um, university um, system as well. That's excellent. That's, that's international affairs is what that is. It's fantastic. That's spectacular. <clears throat> so good. Well, let, let's jump again to um, your teachers. So you're, they're, not all of your teachers are on Oahu either, are they? No. And, not, and you already mentioned not all of your students are. are. Right. So of your 600, 700 students or eight, about 800 students in that range, including high school, they're spread out around all islands or which islands? Do you, do okay, that's a you know what? I'm, I mean, that I, I'm on the board, so I don't know every little all the detail, details. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, I know that we're on the, the um, Big Island, Maui, Oahu, Kauai as well. Okay. And then um, I think we might have a couple of kids on Molokai, but I'm not sure. I'd have okay. to check. Okay. But yeah, it's spread out. But the bulk of the kids are on Oahu. Okay. Okay. Yep. And uh, and your teachers. Both of them are here. Both of them, okay, are here. Yeah, because okay. it's all online primarily, and they can do their thing with the Outer Islands kids as okay. well. We do have satellite offices. Um, sometimes they come and go, where we will have a um, science magnet 
facility where they can learn about whatever in the, on the different islands. So that evolves, comes and goes for us. Okay, okay. Let me um, rephrase the, uh, the sociability thing for a minute and say, um, as I have seen and as we have looked at it and explored for our daughter, the options, what we know is, uh, what is available to us is if there's a program, if there's a sport or some program that she is interested in at any of the schools, any of the public schools, we would just be able to, through Myron B. Thompson Academy, reach out to that school right. and engage her into that program. And it is a, is it, it, it's, um, it's an open door policy there. They will accept them in or, or allow her to um, compete for uh, a, a position and all of that. So that, that's how that worked. And was that an easy thing to come by or was that a challenge? It was a um, learning process for us because it, in the beginning, we tried to have our own athletic teams. Right, and but the kids are scattered all over the island. They're not like a typical neighborhood school where they all live in, in one location. So that was hard. So we had a we had a, um, a paddling team at one point, and we had a basketball team at one point. But th at one point, we decided to it was better for the kids to have them integrate into the school that's nearest to them, yeah. and then they just go into that program. So we have a quote unquote athletic director, sort of but his job is to facilitate helping them get to where they need to go. Okay, okay, excellent. I, I think that that's great, and it's a great way to make sure that because it's online, because you can technically spend your whole day just in one room, yeah. um, that there's opportunities, yeah. and I think that's a huge thing to understand as well. Yeah. Um, okay, we only have a couple minutes left, but um, I wanted to hear from you, from the charter school perspective, what are some of the challenges that you face with regards to state education? Right. So, um, yes, from a charter perspective, again, we've, we've been given the task of being semi-autonomous in terms of learning, I mean, imp implementing what we think is important. Um, at the same time, we're governed by the DOE rules and certain things, which are fine. I mean, you know, core education, core requirements, we have to do all of that. Um, sometimes there's there are union issues between the, the, the charters a little bit outside of the the, the union issue and things like that. So that's a bit challenging. Um, but for us, the, the challenge, there are challenges in that we're, a, we are a public school, public entity, but, and we're guided by the DOE, but we have the autonomies. For us, there are more opportunities than there are uh, things that we worry about in, in, in that relationship. So, you know, we, we really like what we have. Yeah, we I really do. From what I've heard, and you might you might know this detail or not, and, and I'll say this now, is I would love the opportunity, if Diana's available to come on the show, I would love to have her come on the show um, and yep. ask her and get her, all of this from her as well and yep. get more deep into the programs and yep. her concepts and all that. It would be spectacular, so I would love that opportunity. Um, but one of the things that I've heard, and just quickly in this, in this last minute, your thought, um, I've heard that charter schools get about 75% of the funding that the public schools get. Is that true? And is that a challenge that you are constantly trying to figure out how to overcome? Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know what the percentage is exactly. I know okay. it's less, but um, um, it's, it, it is and is, isn't a challenge for us because we're, because we're an online school, we, we require a smaller camp, campus. Okay, so that so, is, so we're so very therefore... we're very solvent. Okay, as that, a school. that's a huge aspect. Okay, yeah. so you don't have the facilities to deal with right. in the same way that others do. Okay, right. okay. Right. Well, uh, unfortunately, we ha our time is up. So thank you so much for the opportunity. It was great for us to learn, uh, certainly about Myron B. Thompson Academy as well as charter schools in general. Uh, there's much more that we can learn. Um, I'll reach out again to see if we can get Diane and whomever else over. I would love to get a couple over to talk about it. Um, so thank you again for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host. Carl Campagna. And thanks again to our guest today, Myron K. Thompson of Myron B. Thompson Academy. Mahalo. Mahalo.